Hello and welcome in. Ha Ooh, excuse me. <clears throat> Happy Thursday. Oh my. Yeah, a uh, little little throat issue there. Uh, Happy Thursday should be opening day, but it is not. Welcome into the PHLY Phillies podcast presented by Factor Meal Kits. Use code Phillies50 to get 50% off your first Factor box and free wellness shots for life with any active subscription. Just head to factormeals.com slash Phillies50. Yes, the title of today's show, of course, is One More Day. And now that we're here and it's kind of derailed our Thursday and Friday a little bit selfishly, um, what's one more day? Yeah, and listen, it still is a great day. I know, first of all, Jay, first in the chat. Congratulations. Oh, he dethroned Chris. Slemmer, huh? Yep. Chris Slemmer got caught in a work meeting. So Ooh. Jay and Ray were, Jay and Ray started off the day. Number one spot. Hooray. And then we have. Uh, You're going to go eat some hay <laughs> down by the bay. I just See, may. See, on you. That's, that's from an a actual, That's a movie I know. quote. I know. Oh, my gosh. I was just wait. looking for a piece of the, it was broken. Here's a piece here and there's a piece there. <laughs> wait, I actually know that one. It's a sports movie. Comedy. No, it's too early for this, Jamie. We just started the show. It's one of my favorites of all time. You want to meet on the ninth at nine? <laughs> what do you say? It's not like Field of Dreams. No, way or dumber. Like, dumber? Not like a well, Sandlot's not dumb. No. And I don't remember. They didn't talk like that. Okay, what is it? Red Lobster. Oh. Clue? No. All right, Shooter McGavin. All right. Well, happy happy Gilmore. Thursday. Happy Gilmore. Yeah. No happy Gilmore. Yeah. Uh, happy Thursday, guys. And apparently there's a Happy Gilmore 2 script because Christopher McDonald, who played Shooter McGavin, recently oh. ran into Adam Sandler, and Sandler said, showed him the script for Happy Gilmore 2. It'll probably suck, but just the fact that it's out there and it exists. That's fine. You know? And I don't mind every once in a while a delayed like sequel, or even when they go back into a prequel. I never watched Dumb and Dumber. -er. Yeah, no. So um sorry guys, I dropped the ball on that one for sure. So, Spiral Out, what's up? I know, Chrissy, you're saying, yeah, it's a good day because, uh, you know, Cuz got things going for us. And I know I saw a bunch of you guys in the chat over, the, you know, in Cuz's show for his 9 a.m. launch day, two-hour show. Jamie, you got to join them and have some fun. It was the reunion yeah. of you and Cuz back yeah, like you never left. Way back. So, it was the first <laughs> time we were able to be on mic together in a long time. And it was, uh, it was great. And it was supposed to be opening day and Cuz's launch. But, you know, we can wait tomorrow i guess i know uh, but we will be down at bet parks in south philadelphia tomorrow Woo the plans that existed today are tomorrow's plans uh so we'll be down there doing a pregame show we'll have some tickets to give away during the show and the watch party and then we'll be doing the postgame show so if you're down by the stadiums tomorrow hopefully you can stop by it's going to be a little windy tomorrow but at least it's going to be, be sunny it'll be Nobody sunny cares. it'll be sunny um you know i had some people text me yesterday like Oh, uh, this is absolutely the right call. Being at a baseball game wet when it's a little cold is the worst. Yeah. Uh, it is the right call. And no matter what they did, it was destined to screw them. So today at 3.05, it'll probably just be overcast and dry out there. Mm -hmm. uh, had the game gone on at 3.05, it would have been torrentially downpouring. So yeah, it's, anybody, a, it's a no-win situation. They're trying to do the best for the fans that they can. And for anybody that missed our PHOY Phillies weather update yesterday, that's exactly what we talked about as we were yeah. meteorologists for the moment, uh, that regardless what happened, if the game was played, it would be a downpour and be a monsoon. If it wasn't played, it'd be beautiful out. So yes. I'd rather... It's air on the side of uh, what we're doing now of postponing it. Don't have to worry about playing in any inclement weather. And then tomorrow will be a sunny day. And I know Spiral Out's making a good point, guys. He was saying, um, first of all, glad to have you all here. Hit that thumbs up button. He was mentioning he had the chance to jump over and watch Cuz's show as the Gargano show, 9 to 11. And then his favorite PHOY trio right now. So he's back to back. That's going to be our schedule. We're going to be 9 to 11, the Gargano show. We're 11 to 12. The Eagles are typically 12 to 1. So I know uh, you guys Live get and local back, from nine back to, to back to back to back shows yeah. all the time. And so, then as a heads up to all exciting. you guys in here, you know, our schedule will change a little bit during the season. Yes. Most days we will be doing 11 a.m. per usual. But occasionally a lot of business person specials. We're going to be doing post game shows. Uh, some Friday nights we'll be doing post game shows. Um, so just keep uh, keep in touch with us on uh, yeah. on the social medias, uh, and we'll fill you in. I think the only weekend that we have right now is for sh for sure is the London series. 
But the majority of our post game shows will be typically, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, f- Friday. getaway day in baseball. Yeah. Exactly. Um, but yeah. we have Sam from England in the house. Nice to have you here from the UK. Dave Dewar, Dave P, Mickey. What's up, guys? Hit that thumbs up button. Provolone John, nice to have you all here joining us on this Thursday, non Phillies opening day, but Major League Baseball opening yeah. day. Yeah, so we got some Phillies nuggets to get into. Last night, uh, when it wasn't opening day anymore, I decided <laughs> to set some key stat over underlines that we're going to play today, the three of us, me, you, you, and Tyler. Uh, we'll, we'll play the line game over under on some key stats for the Phillies, one through nine here. Uh, we have uh, some other stuff to get into, and then there's. Uh, some happenings around Major League Baseball as the league does kick off today. Um, one thing I want to say about Major League Baseball's <laughs> opening day, um, I, they've come f- a far away from being their own worst enemy. I still think they screw up opening day. Mm. Now, rainouts are not today. I, If I was Commissioner Jamie Lynch of Major League Baseball, there would be one 10 a.m. game, mm-hmm. one 11 a.m. Mm-hmm. game, one or two 12 o'clock games, two or three, one o'clock, you know, one or two o'clock games, and just stagger them throughout. MLB, uh, you know, packages should be free for the day yep. so you can get people hooked. You should just stagger late inning games on top of each other, one after another all day. A lot of games today aren't until like four o'clock. Uh, there's a couple three oh five, four oh ten, four ten. Yeah, like, like it's just it's opening day, not opening night. So make it a party, <laughs> make it an all day yeah. affair. I still think they botch opening day. Well, I would love to see opening day be similar to how we see Christmas, Thanksgiving for yeah. NBA, NFL, Ball decision day for the MLS and NWSL. You know, every league has these pinnacle days where it's just all day of games Stupid. and with the various time zones you really could tap into that and have like you mentioned 10 yeah. o'clock east and east coast games at I'd 10 love to go to a 10 and the last game baseball is game. like a 10 p.m you know west coast game that's you know 7 p.m their time 10 p.m our time and you literally just are all day baseball <laughs> spiral so. out has me laugh and he says whoa 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 that's way too much exposure for God Major forbid. League Baseball. They don't like that. It would be genius. And I even like the business angle. Look at you. I business know. man, Jamie. Wow. Coffee number two of the day has you rolling because yeah. you also, as you mentioned, you can add in some extra bonuses of you're going to get free baseball all day. You don't have to worry about having any any subscriptions or it's ev- nothing's behind a paywall. Live stream a couple on maybe Twitter Maybe you even do some live want, like yeah. watch along things. If yeah. you want to get maybe like, you should have a you know, red one zone of your... Today. Basically, have one of the MLB crews pay involved. Scott Hansen we'll to come do it, in. but yeah. Well, yeah, but we I like Scott it, Hansen. But... I have to pee too frequently to do that. <laughs> um, Scott Hansen, come on in for MLB <laughs> opening break. day. Yeah, just hammer out. What and would you call all it? All day, like Extra watch with us. You know, like what you do you call it? Scoring that? Have... position. What are you scoring, scoring position? position. Yeah, the red, that's pretty good. The red zone, like yeah, off scoring the cuff. position. Yeah, scoring hire position. us. We have the whole business model for you. If you wanted to, you could even have like the TNT guys that are doing sure. kind of like a Twitter live thing because you know they like to have alternate options for you where you can watch the game with them. Yeah. Like I don't know, you've got options here, but to just have every game at the same time Stacked and I was, on top of each other, it's and it's stupid. literally three oh five, four ten, seven thirty five. Oh, there are some 10.07s. Excuse me. My bad. My bad. There are some 10 Wait, o'clock games. we got, games. like a Seattle, But listen to these 10 Seattle, o'clock games, Colorado though. Colorado or something? No, like. it's, it's Cleveland versus the A's, 10.07. Rockies, Diamondbacks, 10.10. And then Red Sox, Mariners, 10.10. Do any of those games make you want to stay up late and not watch really, some no. baseball? Not really, no. I am curious to see the Diamondbacks a little bit and the Mariners. Yeah, but not but against the Rockies or the Colorado Red Rockies. Sox. What do you uh, mean? You guys aren't locked into... Uh, to the A's you and the Guardians? To, you intentionally need to also be strategic with the matchups. Like, Phillies Braves, great opening day matchup. Knocked that one completely out of the park. Provolone John knows um, what I'm talking about. Tailgating with some uh, bagels and company, some Miller Lite. Yeah. Maybe you get the Bromosas going, make it a some whole Bloody day Marys. Thing. Exactly. I'm in. A baseball game that I don't know early what's in the day. taking them so long to do Just, this. Come on, Rob Manfred. You've done a lot of good for the game. There lately, are two, four, six, eight games at 410. Yeah, what is like, that about? On. It's opening day. What is that about? The sun is setting at 4 o'clock. Opening day. Angels, Orioles at 305, and then eight games at 410. It's literally the second word of opening day. Is day. Day. It's not opening night. Come on, MLB. You don't, yeah, I was going to make a bad joke, yeah. but I'm not going oh, to. Oh, all right. Well, you can't say that now. <laughs> no, I can't say the joke. Well, I don't think we're going to go any I mean, further until okay, you say okay. the joke. <laughs> I was 
gonna make an Tyler, NFL. get the record scratch ready. I, I'm gonna make a crossover joke. NFL MLB cro- waiting all day for opening day. <laughs> Opening night? No, because it's opening day. Well, they don't yeah. call it opening night. But it's ironic because it it's not during the day. Exactly. Yeah, waiting all day for Sunday night. <laughs> waiting all day for opening day. All right, so a couple like, little what? Phillies quick news and notes oh, yeah, we'll yeah, start yeah. with. Um, the NBA, NBA Referee Association, uh, if you watched last night's Sixers game, <laughs> I believe they owe an apology, not to us Sixers fans, not to the real sickos that watch Joel and Beadless Sixers basketball. There's one person that really There's needs an one apology. person that is owed yeah. an apology this morning. And I'm not going to stand for it. Let him know, Jamie. Let him know. Stand up Adorable for your guy. Adorable <laughs> Ranger Suarez in the royal blue Allen Iverson jersey last night with those stupid shoulder pads stood out there at center court and rang the bell. And you stole a game from him on Ranger Suarez night? How dare you? You bastards. You don't do that to Ranger. Is it really Ranger Suarez night? In my mind, it was. <laughs> not his he night. had his hair done up. He had your boy Yoro with him. He I had know, Junior Marte. A, look, at the, look at the crew. He, had his, whole, he had his boys with him. Ranger, oh. Ranger smacked that bell really good, and you went out and stole a win from the fingertips of Ranger Suarez, you rat bastards. How dare you? How dare you call that man today and apologize? It's bad enough the oh, the opening day game for the Phillies got moved back a day. Now you're stealing a prime opportunity. Ranger would have been a hero. He'd be excited. He'd be like, bring him back again. We want him to ring Could the bell again. Could have saved again. him for the NBA Finals, Game 7. I, well, I, I think they... He yeah. deserves that, Renee. <laughs> See that Please picture? don't go to a game seven. Do you, do you have a way to superimpose Ranger into 2K? Because <laughs> yeah, like, that's the only way he's doing anything. You for know the Ranger's going to have seven. one of those smooth lefty jumpers from beyond the arc that looks ugly. And it's I just would right. love. No, I, I meant as a, as a bell ringer. Because oh, the, that's the yeah. only, that's the only way you're getting that to happen. I'd love to see a crossover of Philly sports teams like doing like a field day thing where they play all the different That would be sports. fun. Be I used so to much, love so field day. Fun. Field day was I the love best. I've been trying to push... For field day, forever. We're going to have one at PHOI. I love field day. Somebody's going to blow their ACL out. <laughs> yeah, we're old now. So what? Doesn't matter. So what? You know, like, there's a 40% <laughs> chance it's going to be one of the three it's of fine. us. J- Devon's lost fine. an ACL and an Achilles in the last, like, year right. and a half. It's fine. Everything's fine. My knees fine. are hanging on like rubber bands. You don't have to go 100%. Just, we're going to have a field <laughs> no, day. Yes, yes <laughs> but you do. That's the Casper's thing. If we're, <laughs> if we're going to have a day, I'm trying my hardest. We'll practice. We'll even have a PHOI, uh, you know, Preseason, spring oh, training up. vibe of warming you guys up for field day. We can go to Top needed. Golf and we can shoot free throws. We can do some inactive stuff. Yeah, it doesn't have to be like we're going to do a 40 yard we'll dash. I'll take you guys dash. to uh, like the Sedgley do... Disc Golf course in Fairmount. We'll play. Oh, okay. Now we're that just... sounds kind of fun. <laughs> disc in. Golf is fun. People smoking weed everywhere, having a I good time. I was thinking of something, some things a little bit more up tempo. But yeah, sure. We could go out and play cricket. Sounds Let's... like uh, cricket's fun. <laughs> I used to play cricket when I was in Australia. <laughs> we could go out and play. Uh, I don't know what else is not. Cricket's real fun. I can bowl right. a little bit. Okay. Well, listen. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> doesn't matter if everyone gets hurt if I win. Correct, Spiral Out. Now you get it. Everyone's going to be dropping like flies. And I'll be like, yeah, this is <laughs> awesome. Um, but, Ray, you're talking about Uber not getting that call. At the end. Yeah. It listen, was garbage. Oh. And thank um, God the NBA two-minute report yeah. exists so we know they screwed up. And they know they screwed up. And nothing yeah. is accomplished from it. So but that's I'm really great. But I'm just teasing out. And as you're teasing out Rangers return, I'm also teasing out a PHOI field day. So when it happens, you know who was behind the mm-hmm. charge. It was yeah. me. Me. I did that. Um, so John Brazier was <laughs> just us. on Anthony Gargano's show. <laughs> he works for the Phillies, longtime employee. He said something that just blew my mind uh, oh, no. at the end of Anthony's show. Did you guys know that Citizens Bank Park is now the oldest stadium in the NL East? Isn't that wild? It's not that old. It's, 20, it's the 20th anniversary right now exactly. of Citizens Bank Park. And it's the oldest stadium in the NL East uh, because we have new shitty field up in Queens. Yep. We have the new Nats ballpark uh, in Anacostia. We have uh, Fulton County Stadium. What the hell do they call it now? A marriage. Fulton Ameri- County Stadium. What are, yeah, that's <laughs> truest park. <laughs> truest park. That's what Fulton <laughs> County. What are you? A hundred. <laughs> Fulton County Stadium. Sounds like a prison. Uh, it was then, the '80s. Yeah. yeah and then what else, are, uh, actually uh, the what else are we missing? Not, What's the stadiums other stadium? aren't called those anymore. Nationals, Mets, well, oh, the, Marlins, and the Marlins oh, Stadium is new. That's so Citizens Bank yeah. Park is a relic in the NL East. That kind of just, I heard that as we were coming around the corner, and I was like, damn. 
That, that's actually true. Uh, and it's the 20th anniversary of Citizens Bank Park. Pretty, pretty wild. Yeah, and actually, I just went down a rabbit hole of the oldest stadiums in Major League Baseball. Fenway and Wrigley are one and two, right? Yep, exactly. And then what uh, else Fenway's we number one back in 1912. They're all pretty new after that. Angel Stadium? 1940s, 1914. I mean, <laughs> 1940 was Wrigley Field. Or, and then it jumps to 62 when the Dodger Stadium was made. Chavez Ravine. Angels in 66, Oakland in 68. Oh. Days. And then won't see most, that much longer. Most yeah, that won't be that newish. much longer. I think Citizen, Citizens Bank Park has staying power, though. Like, it, it's 20 years old, but it doesn't feel 20 years old. It doesn't look 20 years old. I think it's, you know, Camden Yards-ish, where it's just going to be Yeah, one of like those they built it kind of stadiums. progressive in a way, where it can age well. Yeah, and, you know? and you know, they have the new proposal there uh, with the city to expand into right. uh, a whole city down there that's a um, lot of ballparks that were created before 2000 Didn't how many that. more than half let me count i feel like it's half yeah one hmm. two i'll I do a quick count newer, it felt like. one two well and, and sit there's, here while Renee there's, there's there's a couple that are probably like so <laughs> hypothetical man brings up a good point i don't know if, i don't know if kaufman gets demolished and they put a new one in or if they just, just upgrade it spend a zillion dollars because kaufman's a nice stadium, it is a cool stadium. but it's it's kind of like uh, it's like an outdated nice stadium at yeah. this point. Um, and they've done a lot of work on the outfield, but I think the, the, the concourse, like the trajectory of the concourse is getting a little bit dated. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it is yeah. kind of a cool stadium. Yeah. So, uh, pretty wild that it's the oldest uh, ballpark in, in the national league East. Um, so the rain delay does affect one thing. Uh, and that was Zach Wheeler going on regular rest on the fifth day. I counted. I worked hard. What, 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 yeah, you did work hard. You counted. <laughs> so, because I feel like these numbers are really important to know. There are 14 ballparks that were created before 2000. Okay. And there are eight that were created between 2000 and 2004. Of course, Citizens Bank Park being one of them. A real boom. So, over half were created 20 plus years ago. There's the math. Math is mathing. That's, um, all. That's all I have to add to today's conversation. Yeah. Okay. That's it. I would have guessed it was probably a little more newer stadiums than, but yeah. yeah. But like a lot of these new stadiums don't age the way um, the vet and those old, just terrible stadiums did. Mm -hmm. um, as you said, you can add to it. You can do renovations. You have bigger uh, walkways and pathways that you can just kind of add on and, and go here. Indeed. Um, so Zach Wheeler does get affected a little bit because of with the Friday off day, he was going to push Spencer Turnbull to that, you know, next start and he was going to pitch on five days rest now that you bump back a day he's not going to be able to do that so you might get spencer Tur turnbull on the true fifth day in the rotation mm -hmm. uh, not the sixth day anymore so womp womp i know but that's uh, a that's a thing it does change the uh rotation up a bit but eh, womp womp. it's okay everything's fine and guys there were renovations that were done uh, this is an article as of february 2024 so it, these dates i'm reading the dates that are here so there have been some renovations and some remodeling, but this is when the first game was played in the respective stadiums. So. Yeah, let's get it. Let's get a little thumbs up in the chat for, for 20, my math. for Renee's math skills. How about <laughs> that, folks? Uh, and Renee, you know, say somebody was thirsty and their math skills wanted to bring them to a a prebiotic soda. Oh, look at you sorts. leading me in. You know, where would wow. one go find those oh, prebiotic Jimmy, sodas? I don't know because you know I'm not sure There's if they so make places. a refreshing drink that's a soda that's Functional as a soda and a prebiotic. What was that? What was that? <gasps> Olipop, 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 Olipop. There it is right there, guys. Olipop is the world's first functional soda with a classic soda taste and the benefits of plant-based fiber. Prebiotics, not probiotics. Prebiotics and other botanical ingredients to help support your gut health. Now, the great thing about Olipop is they not only have great flavors, which I'll give you in a moment, they also provide you with the healthy benefits of two to five grams of sugar, nine grams of fiber per can, uh, two to five grams per can, by the way. And they also provide you with a chance to make sure you're taking care of your digestive system because two out of three Americans, that means for everybody that's watching right now, over half of you, two out of three of you are dealing with some sort of digestive issues. There's three of us in the room, guys. Who's the lucky one that does not have digestive issues? It's not me. And they say, <laughs> it ain't me. 
Not me. Does that mean it has to be me? Congrats, Tyler, on your <laughs> you good gut health. You must have good gut health. Because 95% of Americans say they don't get their daily recommended amounts of fiber. And Olipop makes sure to tackle that issue for you. They provide you with the opportunity to not only have your gut health in check, but also try a variety of different flavors. Over at Olipop, who has just debuted and worked and released, I should say, their new flavors in Wawa stores. They also provide you with classic root beer, strawberry vanilla. You also have a chance to try out their classic grape. They've got cream soda, cherry cola, um, root beer, a lot of different flavors for you because they're located in 30,000 stores across the country, Wawa being one of them, where you can check out Olipop. So there's no reason to have an issue to find them because not only are they available in 30 stores, 30,000 stores nationwide, Wawa, Target, Walgreens, GoPuff, ShopRite, Sprouts. You can also shop for Olipop online. So head on over to Olipop's t- stores today. Um, shop for them online, in Amazon, in stores, in person. And when you do shop, use the code PHLY20 for 20% off of your next Olipop order. The discount does only apply to one-time orders, not subscriptions. Olipop, again, sold online at drinkolipop.com. Sold online on Amazon because everything's on Amazon. And then, of course, in those 30,000 retailers nationwide. So use that code PHLY20. Get your gut health in check. Get your fiber, your prebiotics, and everything to feel good and drink delicious Olipop refreshing soda. Uh, my gut health, I like to fill it with Miller Lite <laughs> because Miller Lite is a delicious, light tasting beer that's only 96 calories. Uh, and as my daughters were telling me the other day, because of my beer love, Dad, you have the biggest belly. And I was like, oh, damn, it's pool season. It's beach season. I got to start switching away from those double IPAs. I got to get me some cold, refreshing, tasty Miller Lights because they're only 96 calories, low carbs, and it tastes like a light beer should taste. A lot has changed over the years, but the simple, delicious taste of Miller Lite has not. It's the original light beer, and to this day, it's still the best one. Uh, It has more of the taste you want and less of the stuff you don't need. Uh, And when friends and family are coming over, you know, like Sunday, I'm going to have my nieces and nephews and cousins all coming over for the Easter egg hunt. And there's no better time to enjoy a cold, delicious Miller Lite, uh, you know, out in the sun with friends and family around. It's just simple times, great memories. Miller Lite's always there because they keep it simple. Undebatable quality with great taste and only 96 calories. Strips away everything you don't need and holds on to what matters most. A light beer that tastes like light beer should. The original light beer since 1975. And times change, but you can always enjoy the great taste of Miller Lite. Tastes like Miller time. To get Miller Lite delivered right to your door, visit MillerLite.com slash P-H-L-Y. Or you can find it pretty much everywhere that beer is sold. Celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, all right, Phillies land. Uh, Todd Zalecki yesterday laid out the math of why the Phillies didn't sign Jordan Montgomery. I don't think people are irritated or upset that they didn't no. push in for him. Uh, the oh, Diamondbacks. Yes, some are. Yeah, there's always going to be some, but, but I think it's a very small minority. I think most people understand that like they're spending more money than they've ever spent. This team is pretty loaded on paper. Uh, you can only do so much. You weren't going to go in again. Well, here's the math, courtesy of Todd Zalecki. Uh, say the Phillies had signed David Montgomery or Jordan Montgomery at 25 million, not David Montgomery, although shout out David Montgomery. Uh, <laughs> they would have a payroll of two hundred and eighty five point eight million dollars, which would have pushed them past the third uh, threshold tax at two hundred and seventy seven million. That third tax threshold is a stiff one. Every dollar spent over the two hundred and seventy seven million carries a forty two point five percent surcharge. It means the Phillies would have paid an additional $30.5 million in taxes. Man. Uh, I'm no math major, but $30.5 million in extra taxes sounds like a lot. Uh, They also would have had their top uh, top 2024 draft pick fall 10 spots, and that would have happened in other rounds too. Another way of looking at it, a one-year $25 million contract for Jordan Montgomery would have cost the Phillies $43.1 million or a million dollars more than what Zach Wheeler would have made this year or next year. I should a lot say. of numbers. 
That's a lot of money. That's pretty simple why they didn't sign Jordan yeah. Montgomery. Is Jordan Montgomery worth $43.1 million? Absolutely not. No, no. Absolutely not. I so mean, it wasn't as simple. That's the thing. There's so many factors. And I know as fans talk through, it's so easy to say, tactically, this guy's a great fit or whatever. But first of all, you have to make sure... Does this does this person fit with our plan? I know even we've talked about the future of, you know, you have a Spencer Turnbull, you have a McAble, who I know we'll get into, you know, the future for the Phillies. Uh, does Jordan Montgomery fit into that plan? It's not just about bringing in all the most talented players, because as we all know in sports, that doesn't always equate to even, you know, winning championships, let alone your division. And then not to mention, there is the financial component. Does it make sense to bring in Jordan Montgomery knowing it's going to cost you more in the long run versus going with, with what you've got? Having faith that you'll be able to get those guys, you know, a Spencer Turnbull, a Mick Abel, even if Tywan Walker, when he gets back healthy, you know, trusting that you're the top of your order for your starting pitching is fine and you don't have to feel desperate to go out and get a Jordan Montgomery. And then, of course, he had one point wanted a long, long, long term deal, although he ended up getting a one year deal um, with a vesting option, that is. But if he wanted a long term deal, that also didn't make sense for the Phillies. So, yes, on paper. People might be frustrated that the Phillies didn't actively go after Jordan Montgomery or Blake Snell, but in reality, it doesn't make sense for this team with what they've already got and financially what they've got to have that take that risk in a sense of spending extra for Jordan Montgomery when you don't need to. That's way too much tuna for That's one a guy. Lot. Uh, you know, tuna. look, he's a solid player, but we're not paying forty-three million dollars for Jordan Montgomery. People, that's crazy. Uh, and then losing all, you know, the international signing money, the draft picks on top of it. Uh, so there's why uh, it boils down. To, unless they could have traded Taiwan Walker or somebody, and now that he's injured, right. uh, that's an impossibility. Yeah, that's not um, happening. So there, it just really was never realistic. Um, all right, the AAA Lehigh Valley roster has been set uh, for opening day. I'm not going to read you the whole roster, uh, but we will, you know, name some of the guys that could contribute at the major league level this year. Uh, this is probably a pretty good quad A team uh, outside of Mick Abel, who's going to join them in a little while after his last Florida start. Um, it's mostly, you know, your four A quad A guys that can help at the major league level in a pinch. But, mm -hmm. you know, your top prospects aren't really here. Uh, you don't care about a lot of these guys, to be honest. I mean, I don't I mean I'm sure they're lovely guys, but, you know, we I don't care about everybody. Jamie, I don't I mean, no, well. we do. All right. So some of the names that could help <laughs> the uh, Phillies this year, potentially, uh, of course, we have Colby Allard is going to mm -hmm. be starting the year in Lehigh. Andrew Bellotti, I hope we don't have to see, but he could be a name that comes up. Uh, David Buchanan, the reclamation project uh, is going down to <laughs> Lehigh. Everybody seems to love him. I watched his interview in spring training. He actually had me like rooting for him. He was he had very good perspective on life and his I career. I root for everybody if I think they have a chance of helping the team. Well, sure, you want them to help exactly. The team, but a lot of these guys just can't. Help I the know. Team. So, uh, uh, Griff McGarry going to be very interesting to follow him in the bullpen uh, and how he transitions there. Michael Mercado, the December trade with the Rays, is going mm -hmm. down to Lehigh. He's probably a guy you're going to see at points this season. Uh, mm -hmm. And then, of course, Nick Nelson, who we know. Um, happy he's been kind of forced down to Lehigh, if we're being honest. I was kind of maxed out on Nick Nelson appearances last year. Well, then you whisper it. Yeah. A... <laughs> well, then that way Nick doesn't hear it. Um, exactly. Ty Tyler Phillips is a guy much like um, uh, Spencer Turnbull that is about a year and a half now removed from yeah. Tommy John surgery, has major league experience. Dave Dombrowski has named him uh, as a guy they believe is going to start throwing more strikes this mm -hmm. year and can help them uh catchers aramis garcia maybe had a really good spring and then and then infielder wise uh cody clemens i would expect to see at some point this year our old friend scott kingery is going to be down there <laughs> Derek hall he's pretty much screwed in terms of helping the major league club at this point uh and weston wilson uh and nick podcole and then outfielders you have david Dahl, matt croon jordan luplo are probably the three maybe you could see at different points this season. Uh, but of course, that means injuries have happened. Um, so we don't love that. Yeah, I mean, and just some <coughs> updates on each of those guys. I mean, Scott Kingery was one that didn't even expect to be back because, of course, the terms of his deal seemed like last season was it for him. But he was even surprised when he was told, like, see you in spring training. And there was a wrinkle and the Phillies were able to retain him on the minor league deal he signed out of the draft. You have a Griff McGarry who Rob Thompson, Rob Thompson He's the most told interesting one. is now moving to be a reliever moving forward. So that's something he mentioned that McGarry is excited for and looking forward to that opportunity. 
You have a Michael Mercado who's focusing on his fastball a lot more and trying to really lock in on that. He'll be used as a bulk reliever as well. You know, each of these, there's for each of these guys, something they're being sent to AAA with to work on as an area of focus to see if they can make that jump to the next level, to the big leagues. Don't know who it will happen for and if it will happen for anybody. But, um, you know, I think, you know, it's great to see these lists come out, see where guys end up, see where we can start watching them. I know we talked yeah. about going to have a chance to check them out and I see we them told play. Ju- we promised Justin and Aiden that we did. We their can't... first games up north, uh, exactly. we, will, we will come and, uh, and see them. So, you know, as, a, as friends of the program, you know, we have to go support the guys. Yeah, exactly. Um, the but we, we will make a trip, I hope, to Lehigh Valley as well this year. We will. Because uh, I still haven't been, and I've been told the stadium and experience is awesome up there. So, yeah, so and really then Weston Wilson to- back with the Iron Pigs. Last year set a club record yeah. for home runs in a season. Uh, gets a chance back with the Iron Pigs again this year and seeing if he can get some time in, in the big leagues. Nice. We'll see. So there you have it down in Lehigh. Uh, some of the guys will be seen down there. All right, now today's Factor Meal Kit supposed to be opening day but it's not opening day pre-opening day takeaway mm-hmm. renee uh is is simple and factor meal kits all you have to do is go use factormeals.com slash phillies 50 and you can get 50 percent off your first factor box and free wellness shots for life with any active subscription you have a little bit of a mick abel update for us we touched on it uh the reason he's not in lehigh uh, opening day, more or less, is he's going to get one last start down in the Florida uh, Complex League, uh, and then he'll make his way up north. Uh, but Mick Abel is today's takeaway. Yeah. Um, not up yet, but will be soon enough. Let's keep it in the AAA area. Uh, manager Anthony Contreras did mention that he's getting some extra reps in. So his, his arm is not ready for the start of the season. So he is down in Clearwater, as you mentioned. And right now he's trying to fill his simulated games uh, and trying to get his innings in to where they want him to be at. So he won't be starting this weekend, but he should be at some point in the near future able to make the trek back up to Lehigh Valley, um, of course. So they're just kind of taking things slow with him. They mentioned they don't want to like rush him back uh, because he is a little bit behind schedule. So Mick Abel, who's been showing a lot of promise, not ready yet, but should be ready hopefully soon, getting some extra reps in down in uh, beautiful, sunny Florida. I wish we had some of that sun right now as I'm yeah. looking out the window. Uh, but make it doesn't seem down. very rainy out there, does it? No, it's not. And it was supposed to be the worst right now. No, I know. It's going to be clear well, at 3 o'clock, isn't it? I told you guys, everything I say is typically wrong when it comes to the weather. And it's I projected it was going to rain all day. And here it hasn't outside. rained yet. Son of a... It was like drizzling yesterday, too. It did rain overnight a little bit, but it was drizzling. It was nothing like the monsoon we saw of like two weeks ago. So uh, Daniel bad. Denny in the chat saying, let's go Mets. Uh, I think Daniel knows as much as anybody else that that's not going to happen. Uh, one of the best Family Guy uh, clips there, of though. all time is when Stewie goes to Mets opening day uh, and they do the first pitch. And, well, the Mets season is over. Thanks for coming, everyone. Uh, Dan knows that. But, Dan, if you're going to be in here, just hit that thumbs up button for us. Uh, you know, if you want yeah, a place where up. good baseball happens, you can hang out with us here at the PHLY Philly Show. Exactly. That's okay. We don't well, mind. it is getting close to two game time, Jamie, as <gasps> we have talked time, a lot about game time, game time, game, game, time, time. game time, game time. Now, today the fastest <laughs> ticket growing app in the country for a reason, Renee. <laughs> Today's game's not getting started until 305 Angels Orioles uh, before the eight games at 410. And with that, let's get you ready for game time, though, because although opening day may have gotten pushed back a day, you still want to make sure you're prepared for those last minute deals making sure you're getting the best tickets, best seats to have the best time with your best friends. Any more bests I can throw in there. So at the Game Time app, they really want to make sure to simplify the process for you. The exciting thing is buying tickets should not be stressful, and they make sure to alleviate that. You can see your seats. So you don't have to worry about, is there going to be a column blocking my view? Is there going to be something protruding, sticking out that I'm not going to be able to see the, the stage, the court, the field? Because the Game Time app allows you to buy tickets to any game concert comedy show anything sports and entertainment you're looking to check out and also with the game time app you now have everything right on your phone for those last minute deals and your tickets that when you show up you can just scan your ticket i saw a gentleman that had the good old-fashioned ticket with the ticket stub and i love a good old-fashioned ticket stub but i also know that means you could lose it you can be looking through especially for women things get lost in our purses men things get lost in your wallet You don't have to worry about shuffling through looking for a paper ticket or did I print it out or did I leave it on the printer or Wi-Fi issues when you show up. At the game time app, your tickets are right there on your phone. 
easy to scan, making it nice and easy for you to get in and have fun. So with the MLB season underway, use code, typically it's P-H-O-Y, but you actually can also use code first pitch for $20 off your first purchase. See what we did there? First pitch gets you $20 off your first purchase over at the Game Time app. In honor of opening day, we're giving you an additional code in addition to our usual PHOI code to get $20 off. So again, head on over to the Game Time app, download it today, and as a first time user, use that code first pitch, get $20 off your first purchase, and have fun watching opening day, concerts, shows, anything else that you're looking to purchase through the Game Time app. Yeah, I'll be using it again because uh, rudely, apparently, we have an anniversary every year. And the uh, let me actually, I'm sorry. The before, concert I want to go to is our anniversary. Let me weekend. not be rude because I just want to make sure people understand first pitch is F I R S T P I T C H. There's a little note not in there the just numerical in case. Yeah, pitch. not first with the number one. Uh, first spelled out with an F I R S T. Well, I'll be using game time uh, when I get tickets for our anniversary weekend. <gasps> she kind of knows who I am, so we'll see. Can't say that out loud. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm married to Jim James. I'm not married to her, but game time is great. Okay, and if fair. Rob Manfred, you know, was smart and took my free idea I'm giving him about opening day yeah. and started games at 10:30 or 11 a.m. and staggered them throughout the day, you know what else would be a great uh, addition there? Tailgating with bagels and company. Mm. Because who doesn't like tailgating in the morning? Yeah. We do it for football. Why not do it for baseball? It's opening day, Rob. And I am one, uh, I've been a little bit of a polarizing figure in my friend group. I am a big bagel sandwich lunchtime guy. So really, Bagels and Company is good all day. They're the best because they take uh, the best out of New York's rat city and bring it here to our beautiful backyard in the Delaware Valley. So you don't have to go to New York anymore to get that Brooklyn-style bagel. That means that's a big boy. Uh, big bagels. They usually have 15 to 20 different varieties to choose from daily. They probably had St. Patty's Day bagels. They're going to have Philly's opening day bagels. Sixers play in tournament bagels. They'll have something. Joel and Beach will be back any day now. Uh, but they are, you know, kind of know what's going on and they make their bagels around our lives and they have affordable prices and i don't even want to tell you what i paid for coffee and breakfast this morning because i'm still crying about it in today's inflationary world most people are scumbags bagels and company are not because they said we're not raising prices we don't want to be that fancy place that you splurge on the weekend we want to be there every day for you as a staple of the community a backbone giving you bagels and coffee at affordable prices and you're not going to pay seven dollars for a cup of coffee like some other a-holes out there. Oh, my. Uh, yeah. Well, I said it. I mean, who likes paying more when you don't have to? It's bagels and coffee. It's simple. For the best Brooklyn-style bagels made right here in Philadelphia, head to thebagelsandco.com slash store dash locator to find the closest bagels and co nearest you. All right. We have two things to get to. We have the MLB news and notes to finish up with. And we have my little Phillies over under game oh uh, that I created last night. Which would you guys like to do first? Would you like to let's do MLB do news, news and notes? Let's get the all right. Let's get the news and the notes. Boring over stuff with. out of the way. All right, couple We're news and fun. notes for around Major League Baseball. It is opening day. There's going to be a lot of games going on out there today. It's going to be fun. We just have to wait another day. Womp That's fine. Womp. Well, um, it's good. We get a day to watch other baseball games, and then we get a day <coughs> to focus on the Phillies. Yeah, and don't forget to bam, bam. adjust your uh, fantasy baseball lineups out there. Uh, if you're in a fantasy baseball league, because a couple rainouts today, the Mets got uh, mm -hmm. postponed. I think again. Tweak those tweak those rosters. I, I don't. I didn't look at the Yankees if they were home or away. I don't know. Um, the Yankees, I think. And got... the Orioles postponed. I didn't look at. I just cried uh, about oh, postponement. No. I didn't look at the other postponements, but I know oh, the Mets wow. were. Uh, yeah, but... the Yankees don't play. To... Oh no, the Yankees do play today. They're Are they playing. Out West? Yeah, they're. But... It, it's Houston. just those two games. It's, it's just, just, the, yeah, Mets it's just the Mets and the Phillies. Oh, wow. lucky us. Great. So our Mets fan, this is the one, the one thing yeah, that we actually Baltimore has not Grand. been postponed yet. Wonder. Hmm? Baltimore has not been postponed. Okay. No, yeah, they're playing at 3 I just said, good, great, grand, wonderful. <laughs> Everybody get on the bus. <laughs> Who eats 30 bag lunches? Billy starts Mad the third grade. Oh, oh Billy Madison? You've been a lot of Adam Sandler I, I, lately. I guess I guess I have. Wow, Happy yeah. Gilmore and Billy Madison have been like yeah. your go-to. Did you there watch you them recently? No. Did you watch Fast and Furious last night? I intentionally, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I 
intentionally told you so you could go Did watch. they interrupt the Fast and Furious replay to do another Paul Walker tribute? <laughs> it was actually Tokyo Drift. Okay. Which does not have Paul Walker in it. But at that point, I couldn't go back and say, oh, wait, wrong Fast uh, and Furious. Yeah. It was the Bow Wow oh, version. Oh, it was yeah. rough. Some <laughs> bad acting. All right, a couple MLB <laughs> news and notes. Will Smith yesterday gets added to the Los Angeles Dodgers for 10 years, $140 million. Um, another long-term deal for the Dodgers is they're just throwing around money like it's funny money. To me, $14 million a year for Will Smith sounds like a, a bargain, to be honest. Uh, you know, one of the best catchers in the game, already mm -hmm. has a World Series ring with him, gives you pop, gives you great catching. It's kind of a good deal for the Dodgers, so that happened yesterday. The thing I like most about this is Will Smith is on my fantasy team. Mm. So keep pumping all these exciting things into these guys that are on my team. because he's, that means He's not even the get, richest Will Smith in L.A. He's not. <laughs> you know? Did you just come up with that on the spot? <laughs> no, I mean, the other Will Smith is very popular. <laughs> no, I know, but that was good. Yeah. That was good. I like yeah. what you did there. I see what you did there. Um, but, you know, when you have a chance keep to Keep have... my wife's name out your mouth. <laughs> so there it is. Do you think okay. he's going to do that on signing day? Will Smith! Yeah. That was Will Smith! <laughs> I got one, guys. There you I go. got she one. Got a reference. Woo! Um, you forgot to slap. So, you know, Will Smith gets this contract extension. There's deferred money in it as well, I of believe. That's because that's what the do. Dodge Dodgers and deferred go hand in hand. And with that, um, you know, they have a lot of belief in him. And if you instill that belief in him, I don't want the Dodgers to do well, but I'd like Will Smith to do well and Mookie for the sake of my fantasy team. So selfishly, when I saw this news, I was like, that's my guy. Because besides the Phillies, now my fantasy team is also just as important. That's Yes, that's fair. I'm very excited for you. Ah, uh, there's my, it came there's out my yesterday, guy. I believe, from Bob Nightingale that the Yankees, and again, this speaks to Scott Boris's kind of bad offseason, uh, the Yankees a little while ago had a four-year offer on the deal with Jordan Montgomery. Sure. They didn't think it was enough. Uh, they backed out. The Yankees didn't get reinvolved with it. And again, it seems like Scott Boris's clients really kind of suffered this year. And, you know, people might be like, oh, you really don't Scott Boris. I watched um, uh, Chris Rose, and he does the uh, the baseball podcast with former player, and I'm Trevor Plouffe. Uh, and Chris Rose was like, you know, he threw the conspiracy out there to Trevor, and Trevor went, well, I kind of buy that. Mm -hmm. And Chris was like, you're actually telling me that GMs around baseball would stonewall Scott Boris at the, the own success of their club. And he was kind of like, how can you not believe this at that point? I mean, here's the, here's the reality So that's coming from a guy that has m way more knowledge of contract talks and agents than I do. So We are in an offseason where the Dodgers alone spent $1.4 yeah. billion dollars on five players. Teams are spending out the wazes. Yeah, and that was Trevor's Money point. Money is like yeah. Monopoly money at this point. And to see Scott Boris's The Boris Four uh, sit on the table for so long and Jung Hu Lee be the only one that gets a really good deal with the Giants. Pretty funny. It is ironic, but I think what it what it it's more than just like people are trying to stick it to the man, so to speak, as much as you're talking about Blake Snell, you're talking about Jordan Montgomery, Cody Bellinger, Matt Chapman, guys that teams don't have to jump at. You know, you can get as much as people may have wanted a Jordan Montgomery in Philly, for example. You don't have to have him. You know, this isn't a Bryce Harper on the table. So I think it also is a reality check of, yeah, it's okay to raise the price tag for guys that are deserving of that. But teams, there's so much talent across the league. You're not going to go out and now go over, you know, any spending. As we talk about the numbers that the Phillies would have crossed over into if they had spent for Jordan Montgomery, he's not worth that. No. And a lot of teams have that same thought of like, Joke's on you, buddy, because we have a we already have a, a guy that fits the bill. We don't need to go out and spend for your either of your boars for. So I think it was that reality check of like, okay, you may have a Bryce Harper and different, you know, talented guys you can get that money for, but not all your players are gonna go for, you know, nine figure types of deals. Yeah. Uh, and then the last uh, MLB news and note from today, um, we're not gonna spend a lot of time talking about them because Chances are he's a sex pest, but we will uh, wait for the trial to happen. Uh, but Wander Franco was yeah. placed on a paid administrative leave uh, oh. in an agreement between Major League Baseball and the Players Association until June 1st. Uh, at that point, there should be more information from his trial known. Uh, so one of the former top prospects in the game uh, is getting paid to go away for now. We'll see what happens with his trial. Uh, but that broke this morning. Well, what else broke that's exciting news outside of that skeevy gross news? Um, 
Bryce Harper, as we're talking about him, is going to be a father of three. I don't know if you guys saw the news on Instagram. Yeah, these Phillies are very him fertile. And Kayla, so fertile. My gosh. They're, they're just pumping out babies left and right. Yeah. Uh, Bryce Harper and Kayla Harper makes posted a picture three for three. You know, they're adding. They've already got crew, who's their four-year-old son. Brooklyn, their three-year-old daughter. And now they're adding another little to the, to the crew. Uh, another Harper. So three for three. That they're expecting another baby. And, yeah, uh, the Phillies are definitely baby booming. Yeah. That's for sure. They're single-handedly, like, keeping the, I guess, the, what is it? Sensitive. Are you worried about the population? <laughs> yeah. Because there is uh, thoughts out there. I, I know. No, you, that's a real thing. Yeah. That we're they're not... single-handedly, like, helping the population. All right, good. Out, for sure. Uh, I mean, good for them. They're, they're real good members of the community. Yeah, how thoughtful being, of them. Yeah. They continue just having babies left and right. Yeah. So I don't know when they're due, with, but they are. Um, it is March, so... Yes, Casper the Ghost in the chat. He is on paid administrative leave. Yes. Uh, the oh. MLB, uh, too, back to the Wander Franco discussion. Um, on, you know, Contrary for stories. good or bad, mostly, most of the time it's good, but the MLB Players Association is very, very powerful. Um, and, you know, they being part of the union, you got to do what's best for your guys yeah. until proven guilty. So he is being paid at least through June 1st, and we'll see what happens there. All right, let's get yeah. to our Phillies over unders for the year. Uh, maybe we can do pitchers tomorrow. Uh, but I did the lineup one through nine last night. I mm. went through it. <coughs> You're Excuse me. Up there with and the uh, I went through and found a what I think is a major offensive category for each guy. And I set what I think are pretty fair lines. I took into their time here in Philadelphia, I took into account their career. And kind of shape these numbers around, you know, the back of their baseball cards. And will they more or less overperform or underperform in said categories? Okay. Uh, okay. So we're going to start at our leadoff man, Kyle Schwarber. Uh, first, Renee can give her over under, then Tyler, and then I'll give mine. I set the over under on his, because Kyle Schwarber is all about home runs. I don't, I don't care about walks. That's great. It, it, he's boomer bus player. Home run to me is the important Kyle Schwarber stat. Okay. In two years here in Philadelphia, he had 46 and 47 home runs. Beautiful. I'm going to set the over under on Kyle Schwarber home runs at 45. Are you taking over or under? Um, I'm going to go. <coughs> because 46 and 47 are uh, his career highs. So yeah. do you believe he's going to do it again? I'm going to go under. I'm not good on the spot with decisions. You're going to have to be, Renee. <laughs> I'm trying. You got nine of these to pick. We, yeah. we, oh, no. Um, why am I just first? Your gut. I'm going under. Okay, under. I'm Tyler, under. over, under, 45, but Schwarber, a close home under. Runs. Uh, I am going to take the under, but I do believe he hits 40 plus again. I was going to say the same thing. So I think he probably is in like the 42, 43 range. Okay. It's going to be close, but I will take the under. I think there's a, a slight regression, uh, but I would take the over. 200 average. I think he has a better average this year. Okay. Yeah, I do. I could see like a 40 to 44. Range. I am with you guys as well. I'm going to go under on the 45. I think he's in that 42, 43 range. Yeah. Um, that's a big, that's a, that's a big number. It's a lot of home runs. That's a lot of home runs. I know major league baseball <laughs> has him projected to hit the second most home runs this season behind Aaron judge. Um, I forget what the number was for What's that up, one, Mopar, but I think wacko? it was like, I think they projected over 45. Okay. Uh, yeah, Randy I'm Rubert wondering. in the chat says fitty. The 50 Ooh, burger 50 for Schwar plus. Schwarber this year. Uh, none of us would hate that, Randy, Not at all. all. Let's hope you're right, Randy, and we are all wrong. All right, Trey Turner, your number two hole hitter. <laughs> now, Bryson Stott has been giving him some shit. Uh, he has mentioned it himself. He wants to steal more bases this year. Um, he's been in the 40s twice in his career. Mm -hmm. He's a very fast player, in my opinion, in most people's opinions. He wasn't sent enough last year. Uh, at least in the beginning, he, he picked up in the second half, uh, but Rob has even mentioned it. I want Trey to steal more bases. I want to put that pressure on the defense. So I set the Trey Turner over under stolen bases line at 34 and a half. Where are you going? He had 30 last year. Can I just throw out there? I'm not a big fan of the half when it comes to, to betting. Well, that's why well, we're not having any ties, Renee. I you know, need but the like, half what is a half a base? Win. How do you steal a half a base? You don't. You don't. Exactly. It gives you the win so you don't push. Exactly. Yes. So it's a weird thing. But anyways, I'm going to go over, and here's why. I know in the chat, Randy's bringing up, you know, post-ovation Turner um, in terms of Kyle, who I don't hate, by the way. I like Kyle Schwarber. But I feel like if Trey Turner, last year there was a lot mentally going on there. 
He was just adjusting. Of course, the post ovation tray was much better. I think we're going to get a much more calm, cool, and collected tray that can just go out there and play, not overthink, just have fun all season, playing good baseball. And I think he's, with that means he can now just go with the flow, including just going and stealing Run. the bag. So he's going over right, for that Tyler. 34 and a half. Over under 34 and a half yeah. stolen bags. So last year, uh, nine guys stole 35 bags or more. Of uh, you know, Cunha and Ruiz were at the top. Trey Turner stole 30. He finished tied for 15th ish. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was a down year for him yeah. offensively. Um, if I expect him to get on base, probably, I don't know, 15 to 15 to 20 more times. That's maybe a little bit high, but maybe 15 ish times more than he did last year. Uh, I could conceivably believe that he steals five more bags. Assuming he stays healthy and plays close to 160 games. I will take the over in this one. I think he's right at about 35, 36. And in the chat, Ray. Good. So you're saying play it's a good by, line. It's a great line. Ray, play by play, but Jay. Oh, we're, everybody's rhyming today. I feel like it's a lot of J's and Rays and stuff. Um, spiral out. You guys are all saying over as well. So yeah, everybody's that's a good taking one. the over. Mopar says slash line 296. What does that say? One, 180 hits. 180 hits. Ooh. 80 RBIs, RBIs 35. 35 stolen bases, OPS 956. Hell yeah. I like it, Mopar. Let's party. Coming in with the stats. I would also go slight over. Okay. Um, and my deciding factor on that was I think Bryson Stott will give him enough shit if he's not stealing enough bags that he'll, the, the friendly competitiveness. I like it. I like uh, it. We'll push him over. They might All not right. be great taking road trips together, but they do a great job of yeah. motivating each other. All right, Bryce Harper. You guys have heard of him. Two time NL MVP. Yeah, he's pretty okay. good at this baseball thing. Um, I'm going to set his line for RBIs because he is the heart of the order. He is the team. Now, mm -hmm. Bryce, oddly, is not a huge north of 100 RBI guy in his career. He's only gone over 100 RBIs twice, which is kind of wild for an NL MV a two-time NL MVP. So I'm going to set his RBI total at 101 and a half on the year. Renee, are you going over or under 101 and There's a half? There's a clear asterisk you forgot <coughs> on that because Bryce had 100 RBIs in 2018 with the Nationals, 114 with the Phillies in 2019. And since then, though, it's been pandemic, it's been injury plagued, and He's only done he it has twice. never been a dad of three. It's so true. that just solidified it to me uh, as we hear the news that him and his wife are expecting baby number three. We're going to get some crazy dad strength to Bryce Harper. Number three is going for three, and he's also going for over on this RBI count. I think this is going to be a major year for Bryce, a full season of healthy, a full season at first base, a full season of him just feeling good, haven't had a spring training under his belt. He's going over 101. Chris Slemmer says Ooh. easy over there. Tyler, over under 101. <laughs> this ahead. actually, I think, might be the hardest one of the grouping what? that you've put together um, because I think that I don't know how many games Bryce Harper is going to play this year. Like, I think that the back is going to flare up at times sure. and he's going to miss some games. Like, does he play 130 or does he play 140? Does he play 150? I mean that like yeah. I know you can't predict project sure. health and we're saying full but seasons, you have to but like that in with this is a real thing. The other guys you would say, well, if he doesn't get hurt, but there's no there's no reason to assume that he's going to miss time. With Bryce Harper, the back could flare up at any given moment, and I'm not sure how many games he's gonna play. This is really, really difficult for me. Um I think that I'm going to take the over. But I don't think it's going to be by much. Okay. I mean, and, and quite frankly, like, I wouldn't be stunned if he finishes at, like, 92, 93. Um, it's I, fine if, th if there's one, other guys in the 90s this, on the team. It doesn't matter. This, this one I don't know. I Really, for the first time and probably the only okay. one looking at your list, this Two? one I really do not know. I, 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 take it, I take the over on this one, like, optimistically speaking. To your point, though, he hasn't played over 150 games since 2019 when he hit 114 RBIs. Uh, of course, last year, 126 games. He had 141 was the highest in the last five years, um, and that was in 2021. I think so he's going to go over. I do, but I do think he's going to be – obviously, they know going into it his back issues, which I think it's helpful to be able to manage it because you know it going in from day one. Get the German blood um, cycling going. Get yeah, the I think I'm going to I'm gonna stick with the over, but I see it's All a good right. point, Tyler. His <clears> health number, is obviously huge. Number four hitter, the cleanup hitter for your Phillies. Catcher JT Real Muto. Now, for JT, he doesn't have your classic four-hole pop. He's not going to be a 30-plus home run guy, but he will get you in that 20 to 25 home runs, typically, range. So for him, 
if he's not hitting the ball out of the ballpark in the four hole, the thing I think he needs to do great is hit doubles. Uh, so I set a JT doubles line at 28 and a half doubles on the year in his career. He has gone over that four times. Now he had the big off season work in the biomechanics lab, apparently fixed a little bit of a hole in his swing with his front step. Renee over or under 28 and a half doubles for JT. I'm going to stick with the over on this one again, because not only has he gone over, as you mentioned, was it five times? Four in his times career? in his Four career. times in his career. He's come very close yep. in the times that he's fallen short, 25, 26. Um, the lowest for him is like 21. And that was back in 2015. Um, so most recently, when you look at his numbers, the last three seasons, it's been trending. Um, and actually, I'm sorry, dating back to 2016, it's been 25 or more, excluding 2020, because that's the asterisk. The lines makers are good, Renee. So I'm going over. All right. You're Tyler. pretty good at this, Jamie. Uh, I, I'm going to take the under on this one. I think that, <laughs> yes, he's done the biomechanic stuff, and I do think that the swing uh, the, the swing path may be fixed for the, the time being, or, or it's not as loopy or whatever he was trying to work out. Uh, I'm going to take the under, however, because I, I just think that, uh, personally heading into his third year 33 season that the offensive productivity for JT Rimuto is going to begin to slip a little bit. Um, that doesn't mean that he's not going to be good, but I don't think he's going to be uh, as productive as you've seen him in his first four seasons with the Phillies and probably closer to a line, uh, a slash line of what you saw last year at that 250, 260 mark. I don't think he gets over 28 and a half. I would put him probably closer to 24 25 doubles. I'll take the under. All right. I also am going to go under, slight under. Ooh, I think he's in that 26, 27 range. But, you know, God, that's a good line. All right. Bryson Stott, our, our man, as my girls call him at home, Stotty Too Hotty, hitting in your five <laughs> hole this year. Um, really kind of excelled last year, both in the field and at the plate. Shows a great um, two strike hitting ability, shows a great command and control of the strike zone. Uh, so for his major offensive category, we're just going to go with batting average. Uh, Tyler believes he's going to be, uh, you know, competing for a batting title one day in his career. To do that, he's probably going to have to become, an, uh, you know, a 300 or better hitter. So I'm setting for year three, full time in the offense, a over under on his batting average on the season at 285. Are you going over or under, Renee? I feel like I just keep saying over, but. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go over on this one. I feel like he has been trending in the right direction in his start to his career. And I do feel like this is a year we're going to see. I mean, last year was a step up from 2022. You know, mm -hmm. I think this year he's going to continue to progress. Huge improvements. He's getting more comfortable. He's getting he also is someone with dad strength right now coming into the season after they had their first child in November. But I also just feel like he's maturing as a player and even maturing in his approach to the game. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the over on this one, too, right. for sure. So yeah, it's going to be, Chris and Lemmer I will say also, I'm going to take it a step further, and I've been saying this before, but because we are pre, it is opening day eve officially, I'm going to also say this is the year that Bryson Stott puts his name on the map outside of just Philly, that more teams are aware of the talent of him on both sides of the ball. All right, Tyler, over under 285. Yeah, I, I don't think you need to ask me this one. You know where I stand on Bryson Stott. I'm going to take the over. Last year he hit 282 against lefties. I expect him to continue to uh, progress better against left-handed pitching. The power is obviously there much more for him as a, uh, a lefty against righties, but that generally happens for most hitters. Uh, BABIP last year was 312, which means it was a little above average. So even if that comes back down just a little bit, you know, maybe the average – uh, dips. I mean, you would think maybe the average dips a little bit from the 280 that he hit last year, but I think he just takes another step forward. 285 is probably right at a really good line. I, I could conceivably... God, these bookmakers are good. I could conceivably <laughs> see him at 280, 288, right, 289, 290. Uh, I, you know how I feel about Bryson Stott. I'm going to take the over on this I'm one. I'm going to go slight under, actually. I think he's going to be in that 282 or 283 mm. range uh, because of this. Uh, last year, yes, he did take steps versus lefties, which was great to see. This year, I think they're not going to be as selective a, a, of which lefties he faces. I think Rob Thompson in the analytical department okay. last year threw him out against lefties that they thought he had a good chance of hitting. Mm -hmm. This year, he might get out there versus some bigger name lefties. So I don't know if his, if it, uh, you know, I hope I eat these words, uh, but I'm going to go okay. slight under there because of that. Play by play with JJ's mentioning also Kevin Long's points uh, about wanting Stott to swing at the first pitch a little bit more. 
Um, yeah, I mean, there's some tweaks and some things that they've been talking about behind the scenes that could help her hurt in this situation. Yeah. All right, Alec Bohm is going to be batting in the six hole with him. He's made improvements defensively. Uh, he needs to basically not ground into as many double plays this year. Please. But the ultimate question with him is, can he develop the power that you kind of need from a third baseman? Uh, he's been taking baby steps in the right direction. Will he take the big toddler step? That's to be determined. So I set his home run line at 23 and a half home runs this year. Renee with the Bomer, are you going over or under 23 and a half? So I can't keep saying over for everything, A, but also I feel like last year with 20 after having, I mean, 2022 had 13. And of course, he's still another young guy in that sense. Sure. Um, I'm going to go slightly under, though. Okay. I think he's still going to be around that 20 mark, um, probably 19, 20, 21. But I don't think he's going to be, I don't think I have, he's been making a lot of strides. I feel like everything that we've heard about Alec Boehm has been a lot on the being locked in as an everyday third baseman instead of having to play first and more of that aspect of his game. I feel like his, he's just going to continue to give you All steady right. at Chris bats. Lemmer says over with 27. WYM oh, wow. says over. Uh, shout out Chris Miller. He says Bohm under 23 and a half. Yeah, Hypothetical I think man over under. easy. Randy says over. Um, <laughs> Spiral out says over. Come on, Bomer, step up. Tyler, <laughs> over under 23 and a half yeah, dingers. I, I think if you would have given me 25 and a half, I would have definitiv definitively taken the under. Well, that's why I did I, I, I don't like you, to be quite <laughs> frank. Um, this Tyler is a, respects a good sports This book. is a really good line because I think he's probably <laughs> at about 22 or 23 home runs this yeah. year. Um, Which would be great, Make a decision, too. coward. <laughs> if I'm going to stand on my business and what I've been talking about with Alec Bohm, especially with one of our okay, uh, one of the big uh, Alec Bohm stands out there and our, our friend Vince, uh, I will take the under, um, but it's not by much. Okay. Yeah, again, I think, and I know Chris Miller in the chat. What's up, Chris? You're saying 20 was the last meaningless, the last meaningful game against the Mets, and he barely got 20. Like, I do agree that it felt like 20 is right where he's at. And I think that's a great spot for him to be this year. Well, this year. is kind of the reason I went home runs with him. This is like kind of his make or break year, I yeah. think, when it comes like to power. I mean, I think he's tapped out in power. That's the thing. That's what I think, too. I'm going to go under, personally. Um, but I do think there's a scenario where he hits 23 to 25 home runs. So, again, God, these lines are good, people. <laughs> I, you know, what, what is this, Bet Parks? Is this Bet Parks making these lines? <laughs> All right, the last two hitters in the lineup. And then we're going to call it a day. Uh, Brandon Damn. Marsh is batting <gasps> in the eighth hole. How dare you skip over? Oh, our I'm buddy sorry. Nick. I'm sorry. 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 Man. I skipped the Mimbo. Wow. The seven How hole. How dare you? Uh, Nick Castellanos <laughs> in the seven hole. Excuse me. I'm getting ahead Woo. of myself here. Uh, Got Nick a Castellanos. Cocky over there. <laughs> Nick Castellanos has never been a RBI producer, mainly from home runs. Why Nick Castellanos was given $20 million a year here was because he was a doubles machine. I think one year in Detroit, Tyler, if you have a stat sheet up, I think he had 50, 58. 58. Yeah. 58 doubles in Detroit one year. Had a couple years in Cincy uh, where he was in the 40s. He is supposed to be a doubles machine. So I went with the doubles line for Castellanos. I set the line, Renee, at 39 and a half doubles on the year. What are you taking, over or under? I'm gonna. I like. I like Nick in this spot on the batting order, and I think that's also a huge improvement for him. I think he should take some he, pressure he, off. He, yeah. yeah, and he moved. We saw the fluctuation of him moving down last year, so I think an entire season of him lower in the batting order. Um, plus, I do think he's such a streaky person, and uh, I feel like this year maybe he can be a little bit more consistent. He has been around that thirty something mark pretty consistently so i'm, I'm actually gonna take the over on this one Ooh, Long story right. i'm gonna take the over so I like his, it. his last year in cincinnati at 38 last year with the phillies his first like you know true good season right. with the phillies he hit 37 so that's again yeah jesus jamie i don't want to keep giving you credit because he <laughs> I, I mean obviously he's at 36 37 i was watching the gentleman last night i was on baseball oh, porn wow. reference.com i was making lines i was having myself I, a night. I, i'm gonna take the under i think getting to 40 is a lot um i think he's probably in the 34th ish range 
Uh, you know, he had 37 last year. I could see him maybe duplicating that as well. Uh, but I don't think he gets to 40 to hit your over. I'll take the under. All right. I'm also going to go under slightly. Um, I think he's in that 37 to 40 range personally. All right. In the eight hole, you have Brandon Marsh. Now, I went with OPS for Brandon Marsh as mm. the category. Uh, he, again, a guy that took some serious strides offensively, not only last year, but since he's been here in a Phillies uniform. Uh, I, a big credit to Dave Dombrowski and staff. You heard it as soon as they made the trade for him. You know, Kevin Long and Dave Dombrowski were like, uh, we see holes in his swing that we know we can fix. And they saw something in this kid. He's extremely athletic. He's one of the wet bandits, heart and soul of the club. Uh, so I went with OPS for Brandon Marsh. Set the line at 830. Are you going over or under an 830 line on OPS? Um, so I agree with everybody saying that, Jamie, you were labbing, you were in your bag for sure with this one. <laughs> um, I'm going to go under for this. I think Brandon Marsh has continuously made strides. You look at his OPS and his career and where he's been at. Um, oh, that's a tough one. It is a, a tough, tough one. one, actually. He was 829 uh, last yeah. year. So and it's it was basically huge... based off of, is he going to continue yeah. getting better from he was last seven, year? Seven, he was as low as, he was 673, 637, then 773, 829. This is it's why I didn't want to give up one Christian progressively increased. Kevin Long and the Phillies analytics But I do feel like Brandon good. Marsh is one of those diamond in the rough guys that the Phillies have to continue to bring the best out of. And he also, when you look at last year's postseason, was one of the most consistent and best guys in the playoffs for the Phillies. He was awesome. Given really good at bat. So, okay, if he can continue that, <coughs> he got a procedure this offseason. His knees, you know, cleaned up. All right, let me go over. All right, I'm going to go slightly. Over for it was Renee. 829 last year. I'm going to go slightly over. Tyler, yeah. does his on base and slugging percentage get over 830 one. this year? Did you guys know that uh, Brandon Marsh has the second highest BABIP of all time among hitters with at least 750 plate appearances? Wow. No. Some, I did not know that. At some point, there's going to be a regression to the mean. I, and I hate to say that because I'm high on Brandon Marsh, and I like. I think that he continues to ascend. But I think maybe this upcoming season offensively um, – I, I do, I, and earlier I said I think he could have an, uh, an all-star caliber season, and I still believe that, but I don't think, I think the average drops, uh, okay. or, or, let me rephrase it, I think the average stays he up. He was but 277 I, last year, um, and his on base was 372. So I think the, right. the, the bleeders and the bloops, they come down, because that's just regression in the mean. I think that the power maybe ascends a little bit more. He had 12 home runs and 25 doubles. So that's 37 extra base hits. He had 43 with the triples. If he can get it to like 46, 47, then maybe the over hits because he was at 829 last year. But for right now, I'm going to take the under. Yeah. Uh, people in the chat said this was a tough one. A couple overs, tough. a couple unders. Hypothetical tough. man says this might be the toughest one. Um, <laughs> right. Why does Tyler hate the Phillies? Randy wants to know. I don't know. Tyler's, <laughs> you're very, it's a, you're more critical. Yeah. Well, Tyler's the, I thought he would be good at this because he would analyze the shit. Yeah. I go with, these. I go with a different tactic. All right. Our <laughs> nine hole hitter, the man under. that has been under. Oh, on my head. Well, whatever I, I it, tweeted whatever it. I had it, it at 277. I, I tweaked okay. it to 267. Under. Um, so for Riohan Rojas, I didn't go on base because uh, oh, no. that's not going to, he's not going to be, I don't think, like a 330 plus guy in his career. Uh, he just needs to be a competent hitter and not be an automatic out. And we, we know what his defense is. So his batting <gasps> average this year. Now, remember, in his small sample size last year, he was at what, 302 or something with the go Phillies? Back to him. That's obviously on the high end of what we're all expecting here. So I dropped it down to 267, a 267 batting average. It sounds on the high side, but if you're a believer of Johan Rojas, maybe it's something he can obtain. I thought I should have made it maybe even lower, but I don't want to completely, you know, uh, pee on the kid's shoulder and tell him it's raining. 267 <laughs> batting average, Renee, over or under? Oh, and, and Yoro, I want to trust and believe. Um, I'm going to, for the sake of time, I'm keep this short and sweet. You're going under. <sighs> I'm going to go under. I don't know what to expect from Johan, to be honest. Yeah, like, I don't think anybody really does. Yeah, we don't know what to expect. And I have, I have faith. He's been making, he's been working on a lot of things. I'm going to go under, though. I don't know. Yeah, no, I, I, I think that's a safer bet. I, I set the line a little high. Uh, yeah. But I had to base it on last year's 302 average. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, like, I, I, I'm i not going to set it higher than that. I think more realistic. If he can be that 250 to 260 hitter, I think that's best case scenario. 
But again, I hope I'm wrong. Tyler, obviously, you're yeah, going I'm, I'm going to take the under. I think that if you get him this year to a 240, <laughs> uh, if he gets to 240, I think you're 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 living happy because yes. the defense is so spectacular. But 267 is just way too large of a leap for me to take over the course of, let's say, he plays 130 games this year, approximately. Uh, it's too large of a leap for me to take. I'm going to take the under, and I, I don't think it's particularly close. Yeah, I agree with you. I think it's an under as well. Uh, but I did want to respect his 302 and 150 at bats last, last year. year because, you know, sometimes there's recency bias when you, the last time you saw the guy, he was an automatic out. You have to remember in that, you know, those 150 at bats, he did have a, above a 300 average and his speed and athleticism will allow him to get on base occasionally. Uh, but most people in the chat are, are saying below Mo, Mopar's telling me I'm nuts. I need to go take a lap. <laughs> He's going to be are a, doing really well. He was a, a sub 200 hitter. Yeah, I think this this is where I'm going to make my money back from you. Um, <laughs> you I'll put, put it all, all, I'm gonna put it all on all Rojas in. and then a dollar on everybody else. Yeah. yeah. So tonight, uh, maybe I will dive into some of the major statistical categories for the Phillies pitchers, and we can play a little bit in the uh, an accelerated version in the pregame show tomorrow. Uh, but that pretty much wraps it up for us. Great interaction today in the chat. Thanks to all of you for hanging out with Yay, us. Friends. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Uh, and tomorrow, Bet Park, South Philadelphia, down by the stadiums. We will be there doing a pregame show, a watch party, a postgame show, Miller Lite specials. We're giving away tickets to Saturday's game. We're giving away tickets to Reese Hoskins' first game back in Philly with the Brewers. So if you can, stop by tomorrow. Uh, if you want to register in advance, it's a free event. But, you, you know, if you register, it helps you us. You actually have to register in advance, oh. just to clarify. Okay. So, Go to allphly.com, yes. the events tab. You can find stuff there for us. Uh, we love everybody. Baseball season is finally here. It's been a long off season. We've been grinding every day, but now we actually have meaningful baseball yeah. to watch very, very soon. Thanks to everybody for hanging out with us. For Tyler, Renee, myself, have a great Thursday, everyone, and we'll see you tomorrow yeah, for Philly's pregame action. Woo! <laughs> we all silly like the mayor. 